there's the hawk. Before there was a Tiffany outdoors, there was Tiffany the farmer. Want to use the turn when possible? No, we're not using up everybody Tiffany Outdoors here today I want to talk about feeder insects so a lot of people use different types of feeders you guys have if you've been with me long enough you know I used to breed crickets I had tons and tons of crickets in here crickets have a thing they have a smell they do smell and then there's the constant chirping all the time chirping and a lot of people don't like using crickets, so they prefer to use different other feeders, such as the um, a lot of the different roaches, the dubia roaches. I did try some of those. Y'all, the roaches, ugh, they freak me out so bad. I turn into a screaming little girl. I just, I can't do it. I cannot do the dubia roaches. They just, uh-uh. There's just something about them. Just the word roach is enough to make me cringe, okay? I can't do it. Can't do it. So, I have some dwarf species, and plus I have a spiderling, a little baby sling, and of course they're going to need smaller prey. So, I'm getting back into breeding mealworms. There are no noise, zero smell, and easy to take care of. Let me show you how I, how I take care of mine. Those are the measurements there. It's for 8.5 by 11 sheet paper. And there are three drawers on it. There's the other side to give you guys measurements. And this is very convenient. I'll tell you guys how I have this set up. The top drawer has the adult beetles in it and a I would say about a half inch layer of oatmeal and the oatmeal I got from the Dollar Tree and how I treat the oatmeal I put it in the freezer for a week put it in the freezer for one week to kill off any eggs it could have uh, grain mites or anything like that it'll kill off those eggs after a week in the freezer probably don't even have to leave it in there that long but I like to leave it in there a lot longer than just a few days just to be on the safe side so these adult beetles up here are the darkling beetles and this drawer down here, the second drawer down is where the worms are going to be, the babies. And then this bottom drawer here, I have this empty with nothing in it and this is the drawer where they're going to pupate back into beetles. So the first layer with the adults in has a screen in the bottom. Let me pull that out so you guys can see. So what happens is these guys are moving and shuffling around in the substrate and digging down in it and they do bury themselves in it. As they do that the eggs will eventually work their way through and drop through the screen. And as they do that they'll drop down into your second tier which is where your worms are going to go where all the babies are going to end up. And these guys too, if you don't give them enough moisture, they will cannibalize each other and eat each other. So you have to make sure you have enough moisture in there for them. And for moisture, I have been giving them bug burger and sometimes I'll give them carrots and sometimes I'll give them something like kale or something green and leafy like that just to give them some kind of a nutritional value. That way they can be more healthier and lay more eggs for me. I'm trying to see if there's anyone doing some breeding or egg laying activity. Ah, here we go. Right there. That's a female laying eggs. See that brown portion in the back? She's laying eggs right now. Yep, she's laying eggs.
And one of these beetles will lay hundreds of eggs. Hundreds of them. She's busy laying eggs right now, which is amazing. And, yes, yeah, sometimes I'm pretty sure that the eggs will be eaten by some of the beetles, but a lot of them will not be eaten. She's being interrupted. Look at this bullying behavior here. Look, I bet you those guys there are probably hunting for the eggs that she just laid. It's quite possible. And there we go. We got some breeding activity. Look at that. Two pairs there. More breeding activity going on, which is awesome and excellent. And like I said, all they need is... um. A little bit of uh, substrate like this oatmeal here they will eat that and water source which is every every few days or every other day I give them bug burger and sometimes I'll put some carrots in here and they they love the carrots so they'll go and eat the carrots too all right let's look at the second tier this is the second tier this is where all the substrate falls through down into the next layer and this layer here is where the babies are going to develop and these right here are really really super tiny they're too small to feed anything that i have right now but when they get bigger they'll be perfect food for my my dwarf tarantulas and my sling and before you guys know it there'll be hundreds of these in here in the substrate and you'll know when you have babies is when you start seeing these sheds because they do shed a lot when they're small like this and these guys I I give them bug burger every day so every time they're this disappears then I'll add more and I'll spread it out into I'll spread it out into a couple different spots I got some there I got some over there and as this starts to fill up with more and more of the um, of the larva I will add more substrate to it because this will be my next generation and a lot of these when I I let them grow up and turn into pupa and I have to go to Joe's bin and show you what the pupa look like and these are two pupa and these right here will eventually turn into more beetles and then when I take them out of that third and bottom drawer, when they turn into beetles, and then I put them in the top drawer, and the cycle keeps repeating itself. Pretty cool, huh? Here's something that I want to note. Anytime I open this top drawer, I also open the bottom drawer at the same time. I pull them both out because if I do pull out just this, then my eggs the eggs that are possibly in the substrate could be scraped out and then lost down here and I really want them inside the bin so I pull them both open I don't pull them both out all the way because that could tip over all right I have some of my my springtail food that I have right here and I'm gonna bring you guys in close I'm gonna throw some in and see how they flock to it I'm just going to put a small pile right here, like that. And then wait. That didn't take long. <laughs> Got one taker. Inspecting it, checking things out.
And moving on. <laughs> What I have noticed a lot of times when I put powdered foods in like that, that the babies will come in and come and get some too. And another one coming to inspect. It doesn't really take them long to <laughs> come inspect a new food source. And I will link the video down below on what is inside this powdered food. All kinds of yummy goodness. So a lot of people are probably wondering, where can I get mealworms? I actually got these at a reptile show, and what I did was I just kept them, and I did not feed them out. I let them pupate into those little, little whitish alien-looking things, let them all pupate and turn into beetles, and then I put them in the top top tier of this three three-tier system, and um, the rest is history. And this. You can keep this thing cycling, cycling, cycling. There's one guy that I know, he he's had the same same one for gosh, was it? It was a crazy amount of years. I wanna say ugh, I don't wanna misquote it. I could have swore it was like twenty years. But I'm not quite sure. I could be wrong. But this this thing can cycle and cycle for years and what I'll do every once in a while is get a fresh batch when I go to the next reptile show get a fresh batch of mealworms let them pupate turn into beetles and then put them add them in just to keep the um, the uh, the how do you say this just to keep the gene pool varied and not a straight line <laughs> so because once after a while I have a feeling that there will be a lot of deformities some of these, if you notice, the wings on the back are slightly open, exposing the abdomen. And those are the ones that get attacked sometimes. If you don't give enough, enough moisture, the other ones will gang up on it, pin it down, and eat it. Eat it alive. So in order to prevent that, I try and keep a lot of moisture in there or give them moisture pretty often. And if you guys have any questions, just put it in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe and like button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.